How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. We have nothing to talk about today. Nothing happened in the world of professional wrestling last night. Right? What did I miss? Oh, didn't, didn't Forbes put out a story? A little too premature, saying that CM Punk did not show up? Fascinating night. Survivor Series last night. We saw the return of CM Punk to WWE. Hell is frozen over. However, I think it's more of a time heals all wounds. CM Punk showed up at the end of the show. We're going to talk about that in detail. Also, all the Survivor Series results. We had two Elimination Chamber matches. Elimination Chamber. Soup. Wrong show. We had two War Games matches. We'll break that down. Also, Collision and Rampage went head-to-head -head against this show. Not a great night for them to go head-to-head. -head. CM Punk returning to, to WWE. I, I, we're going to talk about what, what does this mean for AEW because this is a, a perception battle at this point. A lot of people did not know this. A lot of people expected this to happen. A lot of people said never. I kept my mouth shut because I, I genuinely had no clue except Around 9 o'clock, I started getting text messages from people asking me if I'm watching the show. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back from break. But normally when that happens, I expect something big to happen. Uh, and I don't think it was a conversation regarding Randy here. Fascinating night. We'll see where this all goes. WWE firing on all cylinders right now. And signed CM Punk. We're going to come back from break, talk about all this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here with me, Andrew Zarian. We're going to talk about Survivor Series here. But the big story, the big story, we got to start off with this. Men's Elimination, I keep calling it the Elimination Chamber match. Wow, War Games match. I don't know why. I guess the cage. It's breaking my brain. Main event was a men's war games match. Show's about to go off the air. All the competitors are still in the cage. They do the, the, uh, the lower third where they're signing off, and all of a sudden, you hear it. CM Punk's music starts playing. He comes out in the ramp in his white T-shirt. People are losing their minds. I, I, I think by the time that they pulled this off, the, the CM Punk stuff had settled, and the expectation was that he wasn't going to show up for a lot of people in that building. I spoke to numerous people that were there uh, this morning, and one of the six that I spoke to, seven actually, said, oh, I expected him to be there. I think the expectation was that you got a pretty decent show. You got Randy coming back. Gigantic. Huge. Jack to the gills, this guy. Uh, you know, and that was enough for a lot of people, but turns out that was not the end punk punk's music hits. He's standing on the ramp. Seth Rollins is visibly upset. They show he's giving the finger, uh, you know, th this is all fan footage, right? And Rollins is being shown. He's being held back by Corey Graves and Michael Cole. This came off as an angle, right? I, I think a lot of people... Th there's going to be a lot of blurred lines here again, unfortunately, and I hope it doesn't lead down that same path because he's such a polarizing guy, CM Punk. Uh, you know, so obviously they're building something there. Per Dave this morning, Wrestling Observer Radio stated that he signed a multi-year deal. The deal came together 10 days ago and was kept really quiet. So, I mean, first of all, kudos to everybody that was able to shut up and not say a word, okay? The, I never got one inkling of fact from anybody that he would be showing up. It was a lot of, well, we could. we You know, a couple things I did here. There were graphics being prepared, but I, again, no way to verify this, right? It, it's just something that somebody said, and a lot of times you do that if you feel like you're being kept in the dark. If you're one of the network partners, uh, and, you know, maybe you feel like you're not, you're not being told everything. Uh, you prepare for stuff like this. You know, very, it's very common. So that, that wasn't enough for me. 
But around nine o'clock last night, I got a text message and from somebody over there saying, hey, are you watching Survivor Series? And I sent the screenshot. You know, I had it on in my living. I had a bunch of people over my house. Everybody's watching it. It's, you know, the Thanksgiving tradition here. And I was like, yeah. Uh, and then I got some information about, you know, the, the numbers for the show being astronomical. The opening women's war games match. See, I'm not, I'm not calling it Elimination Chamber this time. Uh, it was the most viewed opening match outside of a WrestleMania ever on Peacock, on pay-per-view. I also found out that it was the most viewed Survivor Series at that point, right? They were gonna, they were, they, they were blowing through the viewership. So, you know, when I get a message like that, it's almost like, hey, turn it on, right? I, you know, this was a big surprise, and it was great. I like being surprised here. This was something that we we've spoken about for many, many years. Would he go back? Could he go back? And I guess it can. Triple H in the press conference after this. We're gonna we're gonna run down this whole card, but this is you know the big story here. Uh, he said the deal with Punk came together very quickly. Uh, it really didn't come into uh, fruition until everybody stopped thinking it was going to happen, and all of a sudden it just did. This is all Triple H. He says, love him, hate him, positive, negative. People want to talk about him. He said that both he and Punk were different people, alluding to Punk's departure from WWE in 2014, which ended on terribly bad terms. I'm a different person. He's a different person. It's a different company. We're all on the same. We're all on the same even starting ground. I almost, I almost yelled at our producer. I thought that was a typo, but it wasn't. Uh, he said that the only people who knew about Punk's return was himself and WWE President Nick Khan. This was, they told the talent, I believe, an hour before they went out, which that kind of makes sense with the timing of my, uh, of what I was, you know, the message I got. So, listen, I think this is a huge deal for WWE. The momentum has shifted, obviously. They have, uh, you know, they've been firing on all cylinders. The Bloodline storyline has been unbelievable. That cooled off a little bit. Cody now comes in. He continues this. LA Knight is caught on fire. Has been helping them tremendously. Now you also have the this element of CM Punk. If you're a touring company, you have now those markets that you feel that maybe you've exhausted, or maybe in 2014 you're 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 looking at a little bit of a downturn in, in attendance business. A couple hundred there, maybe a thousand people there. You just eliminated all of that. You're starting over now. Which is unbelievable. I think the reality here is that they have a very unique opportunity. Matt, my producer, give me your thoughts. Um, I think it's very good for business uh, going forward. This guy, for a long time, was, I would say... I don't know, one of the better, to me, one of the biggest draws of all time. And you can see what it did for AEW. So bringing him in now is, I think, good good for them, right? Mm. Yeah. I, I Listen, here's the reality. What does this mean now for AEW? I, as far as the yeah. optics battle, right, and that's a term WWE loves to use, uh, They this was a huge hit to AEW. And... I, I was on In the Weeds with Joel and Jeremy, and we were talking about this on Fightful. And, you know, my, they asked me what I think. I said, if there's an opportunity for WWE to stick it to them or to be able to undercut them in some way, beat them in that optics battle of social media that's so polarizing, you know, this would be the moment to do it if you had an opportunity to do it. They took that opportunity. This is strictly I a business biggest- decision. They're in, they're in a war, even though they're not. They're, they're in first place tremendously. It's still, you got to be competitive, and this is what they're doing. And they signed a guy that was labeled toxic and dangerous by the other guys. Mm-hmm. And now you have an opportunity to show, hey, guys, it's not, it's not the talent. It's the company. Come yeah. over here. Look how much better it is. You don't have, to, you don't have these problems. People are sane here. You know, I'm not saying that that's the truth. I'm saying that that, that's how this is presenting. You know, this could blow up. 
he could be there and he could have the same exact issues and something happens and you're like, you know what? It is the guy. How many chains are you going to give him? Or this is going to turn into a great multi-year run for him. Um, and he's going to repair his legacy. And this was part of why he went to AEW. When he decided that he was going to AEW, he was really, obviously he got the wrestling itch and he loves wrestling. But it was also a, a, a rehab on his image. One of the most important characters for a generation of professional wrestling turned out to be the villain? He doesn't want that. So now we have a very unique chance. Now, the match opportunities are endless. Him and Seth Rollins, obviously. Him and Nakamura, that was teased. Him and Roman. Could that be, could it be him and Roman also? Him and Cody. I want to see him and AJ Styles. Something I've, I've never seen. These are very unique matches and opportunities that WWE has in their hands. Whether or not it works out, we're going to find out. But, you know, we're back in that CM Punk vortex. We're going to be talking to him about him. And this was the hottest that both companies got. You know, AEW got hot because of Punk. And now WWE is going to have this opportunity. A very unique opportunity. The winter of Punk. <laughs> Not the summer of Punk. The winter of Punk. We're going to talk about this a little bit more when we come back from break. Also, all of Survivor Series. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here with me, Andrew Zarian. Hey, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter or X. At Andrew Zarian on there. Let's talk about this. We'll, we'll touch on Punk again when we get there. Show opened up. Women's War Games match. Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Shotzi defeated Bailey, Asuka, Kyrie Sane, and women's champion Io Sky. They went 33 minutes. The advantage was determined by fans. It was a it was a, a, a sponsored Ruffles potato chip uh, poll, and the baby faces had the advantage, which ended not up. A fan turning, of that. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not a fan of that either. <laughs> And it seems like what it did, it turned the momentum to the heels because every time the heels would come to the ring, people were cheering. They were behind them. But they're also a hot act. So I wasn't a fan of it. It was fine. It was a fun match. I thought it was good. I thought ball, both men and women's matches were good. Very good. So one of the things on this match um, is if you look at the times of both of them, this was almost as long as the men's and – there was one less rotation because it was only four per side. Yeah. So they actually give these guys, these ladies more time. Uh, for me, nice, the yeah. highlight obviously was uh, Eel Sky and her crazy uh, blind uh, leap that she, she yeah. just did in NXT, but now people got to see it on the main roster. And it's quite the uh, spot. Charlotte also did a gnarly uh, backflip. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, and she, she actually hit, um, I was listening to Dave and Brian talk about this. She actually hit uh, EO right in the, with her knee right in the face. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hopefully she's okay. <laughs> Not good. Uh, it was fun. You know, it was a fun match. We got Gunther defeating The Miz to retain the Intercontinental Championship. They, this was, they, they kept bringing up Chris Jericho because if The Miz had won this, he would have tied or beat Jericho's record. Do you yeah. remember what it was? And, uh, yeah, I can look it up but i don't know uh off the top of my head um the and also gunther beat him with jericho the walls of jericho with the, or with the, the walls of jericho lion tamer yeah interesting the lion uh, tamer yeah mm -hmm. this was a fascinating show there was a lot of references here they referenced all in uh for yeah. cody they brought up that this is his first you know war games match a match that his father invented and uh and it turns out that this, you know, and then he also invented a, a show here in Chicago. So, like, they're kind of yeah. drawing that comparison. Uh, I, I thought it was, I thought the Gunther match was fine. Santos Escobar, Dragon Lee, gone. eight minutes. Right. Um, Dragon Lee, listen, they're building him up to be Rey Mysterio. They have, a, again, he's, he's a great wrestler. They're going to do something fun here. I thought this was fine. Yeah, this was this was uh what it was. Um, it's gonna help. I, it helps further the story with Escobar and then uh, yeah. 
and also gives Dragon Lee some uh, pay per view time. So then we, we also we get saw to know him a little better. Rhea Ripley defeating Zoe Stark to retain the women's championship. They went nine minutes fifteen seconds. This was fine too. You know, nothing. I saw nothing really terrible on this show. This was a fine show, top to bottom. They have reinvented Survivor Series, which was a dead pay per view. Those five on fives, they were not working anymore. Brand versus brand was not working. They've done a very good job here at creating, uh, making this war games, you know, Survivor Series war games, which makes a lot of sense, the, the two names together. And here's the main event Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, Jey Uso, World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins, and Randy Orton defeated Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, JD McDonough, and Drew McIntyre. They teased that Randy wasn't there. Uh, when the match actually began, and I don't know why they did that. They, uh, because we knew that he was there. They said that he was coming. Finally, Randy showed up. Bigger than I've ever seen this man. Right? Has he ever been this big? He was huge. He, uh, he didn't miss the weight room while he was gone, that's for he sure. He was bigger than Drew. <laughs> yeah. and, Drew and Drew's not a small guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, he was bigger than Drew here. I'm on the WWE front page right now, and they and it says CM Punk makes an earth-shattering return after Orton helps his team win. It's crazy, crazy seeing this on their website. Uh, they also teased the cash in. Rhea ran down with a referee with a briefcase. He went to go cash it in, but not enough time. So that's still available for Damian. Uh, that would have been interesting if they did that, right? I thought they were going to do it, and then, I, and then I after it was done, I goes, it didn't make sense. That it, it felt like it was too convoluted. But um, having a tease in a different spot was unique. The tease in a different spot was very unique. Um, mm -hmm. Seth and Cody threw McDonough off the cage into an RKO, which set up the pin. They're celebrating in the ring, and the music hits. And Cult of Personality starts playing. That building erupts. CM Punk walks out there. He's looking good. Traps look big. His yeah. arms look big. He looked bigger, too. He, he looks healthy is, I think, the best way to put it for me. Yeah, he looked. No, no, I'm not saying, like, big, like, like chunk. I think he put on some muscle size. He looked great. Yeah, maybe, uh, well, he's had time. <laughs> he didn't look tired, you know. Uh, now we're going to see this. We're going to see this set up. And what does this mean? Where do we go from here? We were talking about match opportunities in the last segment. Obviously, there's going to be something with uh, world champion here, Seth Rollins. I, I wonder if he could he continues the I'm the real world champion. He could. It would be he could. So, so here's the question: Do you bring? Do you uh, position him as a babyface or a heel? Because I think heel is the way to go. I don't know. I don't think so. I think the money is him being a babyface and people seeing him for this. For a little bit, you know? Well, then that's going to put off the Seth Rollins feud, in my opinion. Uh, but maybe that's the Mania match. Mm. What, him and... Him and uh... Rollins? Well, you know what? Seth and Seth and Punk for that title. Cody and... Uh, Cody and uh, Roman for the other one. If Dwayne's not doing it. Very unique that's, opportunities here. Money. What if, or I mean, would it be more money if you did Punk and and Roman? I, it's. I guess it depends on where they put him, what show they put him on too. If he's going to be on SmackDown or Raw, you know, you know, so many, so many questions. You know, we, well, he is on Raw tomorrow. He will right. be on Monday Night Raw tomorrow, which that Raw number is going to do pretty good, even though there's competition with football. But yeah, but know, the game isn't that great, so it should that, be fine. You got that Paul Heyman connection there. You know, what if Paul screws over the bloodline? What if Paul's the one that does it? You know, he has his guy back now. A lot of unique things you could do here. Let's see. Uh, the Also, the big question is, how many dates is he going to do? He's not doing 100 dates. No. So is this, think, is this more of better. a Brock Lesnar kind of thing? It's way better yeah. for him not to show up to every show, but... Mm. Is this a Brock Lesnar type deal where he does maybe 20 dates or 25 dates a year or 30 dates a year and you're able to kind of milk this as something very special? Yeah, listen, man. How many matches did Randy, how many matches has uh, 
uh, uh, Roman Reigns wrestled this year? Oh, Not much. It's, it's, yeah, it's I forget I forget the number, but it's like less than twenty, I think. Maybe that's the key here. You keep your top stars protected. You keep them, you know, safe and not hurt. So, you know, very unique moments here for this company. And this was a big shot at AEW. Uh, I think AEW's going back to basics is a smart idea. Having this tournament happening is a, is a smart idea because the core following for that show was watching for the wrestling. But man, this is going this is going to be another shot at, at at this company here. Do I think it's doom and gloom for them? No, they're fine. They're going to be okay. But I'm saying the optics wise, you know, what happened there that's going to happen here? Is it going to be the same? I don't know. We'll find out. Other notes, our truth returned in a backstage segment with Alpha Academy. It was doing the the uh, potato spot, the potato chip spot. Drew McIntyre stomped out of that ring after the War Games match and apparently immediately left the building. According to Dave, cooler heads prevailed, you know, as the day went on, but something happened there. Also, they went with a minimal stage setup, so we knew that it was going to be a very big crowd. That was a gigantic crowd in that building. 17,000 plus in that building. And they were all surprised by CM Punk. I like the minimal setup, but, but, you know, after going to, and I said this before, yeah. after going to a large stadium show with it, it wasn't great for viewing um, the entrances and stuff, but on TV, it looks awesome. Yeah, no, I thought it was fine. And listen, they're going to, this is, they, when I was at the garden, I was pulled aside and I asked about this. Uh, and in the conversation, I was told, listen, if there are X amount, the percentage of tickets sold, from that from off the gate you know like boom we release them we know we've sold out or close to selling out or we, our our trajectory our path is going to be a total sellout we will open up more seats now the seats weren't open because of cm punk because but when they opened those seats it wasn't even happening the last set maybe when they knew that it was done the deal was done 10 days ago so they knew this was going to be a hot moment for them and a very unique opportunity We'll see where this goes. I want to see him in Nakamura. I want to see him in AJ. Him and Seth. Roman. Cody. What's the one match you really want to see out of it? If there's one. Him and Dwayne. Part two. <laughs> oh. uh, you know what? It's probably him and Roman. I want to see. I want to see what they could do. Yeah. I really want to see what there's they could do. These are, these were, right. Yeah, there is history there. Uh, there's Heyman there. There's a lot that they could do here. They're gonna have to be smart. Very, I, I, I mean, this is this is all fun stuff. This is all exciting stuff. We're talking about this. People are gonna watch Raw now tomorrow. Normally, a lot of people skip it around this time. See, this is how the momentum kind of shifts. Ticket sales are gonna shift a little bit. Let's see. Let's see where we go from here. We also have to talk about Collision when we come back from break. And Rampage, they had a three-hour show yesterday going up against the pay-per-view. The Continental Classic is also kicked off. When we get back, we're going to break this all down and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Not only did we have Survivor Series last night, we also had Collision and Rampage. I don't even know what this number is going to be maybe better than last week last week was was atrocious different night though they were on a friday with collision they went up against smackdown this was the most watched survivor series so the, i don't know if that's going to play a part in this this number but it was not a good collision there were some issues with this card let's talk about rampage first rampage hook defeated rocky romero Fine match. Rocky's great. Hook is getting there. He's little by little. You know, you're you're improving him. Chris Statlander and Diamante. This was not good. There were some issues in this match. Did you see it, MG? I watched this. I was watching in the background um, as I was getting ready for uh, Survivor Series because I totally forgot that it was coming on at seven. Um, 
But when I this was the match I turned on, and I Diamante looks like she's never wrestled before. It was she not good. Really slow. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I, I don't know what were, was going their on. Their timing there. was off. Yeah. Uh-huh. You also had the Kingdom defeating Duke Davis and Danny Jones. An ROH pure title match. Wheeler Yuta defeated Shibata to win the title. Uh, so I, I think some of this has to do with the fact that Shibata has to go back to Japan. I'm not sure if it's a visa issue or not, but he has to go back, and they had to pull that title off of him. So now Yuta has the, the ROH pure title. Um, I think it's fine, you know? Yeah, yeah. He had it before. This is the story is that, you know, he beat him and now he you to beat him back for the title. So, it makes sense. It'll be on yeah. TV more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Collision. You had the Continental Classic Blue League match. Brody King defeated Eddie Kingston. This was a great match. I like this match a lot. Keith Lee defeated Lee Moriarty. There was a Lee chant happening throughout the match that tickled Keith Lee. <laughs> <laughs> who, are you, who are you, Which Lee are you chanting for? And you know what's funny is, I don't know if you realize this, but Dragon Lee was wrestling, um, uh, uh, what's his face, on uh, Survivor Series. Yeah, there were three time. Lee matches. <laughs> three Lee matches. FTR, Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood defeated the Righteous, Vincent, and Dutch. There was this was a weird match too. There was a there was a mess up, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. something this happened was, here. Yeah, also, this one was sloppy, very. Yeah, House Rules match for the TBS title. Julia Hart defeated Lady Frost to retain. Lady Frost shows no countdown as her stipulation. No count shows. Count- uh, that's that's your typo. That's count your out. One typo of the- there you go. No yeah. count outs. <laughs> Lady Frost chose no countdown. Don't you dare count backwards from 10. She's not a fan of the Royal Rumble. She's not a fan of, uh, of, of any kind of counting, especially war games counting. Not a fan. I've lost my screen here. There we go. Had no idea what was happening here. Adam Copeland came out to make the save at the end. Uh, this was a, uh, there was the boys. You had the boys uh, and Killswitch, formerly Luchasaurus. Copeland came out to make the save. Uh, hit a uh, what concerto? There you go. Thank you. He had a concerto to to kill switch. They're continuing the story between Christian and Adam Copeland. Uh, I thought they did a good job with that segment. I think Killswitch is a better name than Luchasaurus. We're moving away from that gimmick. Which is, I think, I, the, and that's fine. I mean, well, they are. He is part of it, right? When he leaves Christian's crew, right? Because, like, obviously, you see that happening. Christian is verbally abusing him and calling him a dummy. Mm-hmm. Does he go back to Luchasaurus, or does he stay as Killswitch? I think Killswitch is a much better name. I think you can keep this for a while, and at some point, you can have the big uh, return. Maybe even um, down the road, if. He's ever Jack Perry ever he ever comes back. Uh, they Jack can Perry reunite that at some back. point. Yeah. Yeah, they can reunite that at some point way down the road and it'll get a big pop. Um yeah. but but for now, I mean I'm loving the story between these two guys. I don't know about you, but um I think there's gonna be I guess maybe revolution, maybe if you build it out that long, um a huge match between these two. Um Yeah. I mean you know, it's, it's they could do it. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's at the December pay per view. I don't know, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what who between um, Copeland and uh, Christian. And Christian, I don't know. I I mean they're gonna have to do that match. I don't know. I don't know what the perfect time for that is. Mm-hmm. You know, because I don't they can know. Tell a hell of a story. I'm. I'm well, they've been telling it. I mean, they they told it. Yeah. That, that's the main story here that they've been telling. That's the main story. Because outside of the MJF uh, stuff, this is the view that I'm actually looking most forward to the most. It's been kind of happening. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, and then we had Claudio Castagnoli defeating Daniel Garcia in the Blue League match for the Continental Classic Tournament. 
This continues Daniel Garcia's losing streak. I think in the last three matches he's lost. Mm -hmm. So right now, this is where we're at. John Moxley, three points. Jay White, three points. Swerve Strickland, three points. Roosh, nothing. Jay Lethal, nothing. Mark Briscoe, nothing. That's the gold side. Blue League, Claudio Castagnoli, three points. Brody King, three points. Eddie Kingston, none. Garcia, none. Brian Danielson has not gone yet, and Andrade has not gone yet. Who do you think takes this? Uh, I, I was going back for it. You know, it was my, I think it's going to make the finals. I think Brody King. I think they're elevating him. Because uh, cause of the people that they put in this, of the House of Black, I thought for sure it'd be Malachi in this, but they put Brody King in this. It feels deliberate to me. Yeah. So um, I think he's going to go far. The story with Eddie Kingston giving up his uh, titles to put him in the match is, you know, obviously they planned on doing this, but I think that's unique too. So he's going to go far. But obviously you have Brian Danielson there. Uh, so it's kind of hard on that blue side. But I, and there's also a story of Moxley versus Danielson. Um, yeah, I mean, but, you, you know, that? that that's, yeah, because they're on two different mm -hmm. sides here, right? Yeah, that could be but, the finals. That could be, you know. I, I would say, you know, so this is, this is, you know, you're kind of merging your triple crown champion. Moxley makes sense to win this. Mm -hmm. Danielson makes sense to win this. I think Eddie should be in the final make, four. Yeah, I can make an argument for at least half of this field swerve the, the run he's on swerve also lot. you know that would mean yeah. something right if swerve wins this uh yeah. he's another one because he's on a great run right now they they have a unique I, I mean this could turn out to be something nice this could be like a yearly thing that they do they could expand this more you know i know that yes. tony very much likes the g1 style it hasn't worked in north america a tournament like that but you know like that that's based on like old Old stuff. I think more people today are far more uh, aware of the G1 than they were 10 years ago with the access to New Japan World and, and this crossover. You know, Japanese content is now more relevant uh, in North America. You have more talent now going there. I, I, I think if there was a moment for this to work and they could show that this is something unique, it'll work. It's also a nice filler for the end of the year. Yeah. Yes, and also the twenty minute time limit I think is a good a good call too because the G one is thirty minutes, making mm -hmm. these twenty minute matches yeah. it limits the, how far they're gonna go, and it, you can tell a story with it because there's gonna be some draws in here that's gonna muck up the standings a little bit, and make it interesting. Yeah. Now, I mean, here's another question: Does this shift AEW's plan as far as their TV goes with Punk, Le you know, being in WWE now? Do they, do, are they going to pivot here? Because I think if you are, you got to pivot hard. You got to do something that's going to gain a lot of conversation and interest. You know, the Drew situation is fascinating. Does, did he sign a contract? Did he not? Uh, would you bring him over? Would that be a big get for you? We've seen, you know, the Adam Copeland stuff. I love watching him on TV. I think he's unbelievable. But it hasn't shifted that, that needle. It hasn't moved it. Right. I mean, at I, this point, who who could you bring over that is uh, CM Punk level? Really, no one. Uh, even I mean, even Drew. Yeah. yeah, even Drew, mm. right? Even Drew would mm. be one. Uh, mm. you you don't get those opportunities too often, and I I it, you know it's unfortunate AEW couldn't make it work for numerous not 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 a blame on AEW but for numerous reasons they couldn't make this work, mm. and. You know, you have him in your arsenal. It's better to have him there than not to have him. And now he's in WWE, and this is this is another momentum shift. I, I'm curious if this is going to change anything for them. Uh, how how does this feel with WBD? I know that w, WBD was very much on AEW side with what they were doing. They weren't getting in the middle of this punk stuff. Uh, you know, we finally got over the CM Punk conversation. It was like two weeks we didn't talk about him. <laughs> and now we're back i got sick of writing notes about him <laughs> and now we're back here we yeah. are <laughs> and here we are i mean listen i think the continental classic is going to be interesting this is also you know you got to remember they're also losing brian danielson for the most part yeah 
at the end of this year. He's just going to. He's going to be pretty much part timer. I think he's still going to wrestle. I think he'll I still wrestle. Gonna... Yeah, but I mean, yeah. but again, this is just another thing you're going to get. You did get Will Ospreay, and I hope that you could build and build this guy to be a tremendous, tremendous TV star. We already know what he's capable of doing. Now he needs to become a TV star. Mm-hmm. You also have to put Kenny yeah. in a key position again. You gotta, you gotta elevate some of these guys. You gotta have these unique match opportunities happening. You know, you're, right now you're yeah. in. I also don't want them to rush anything like like Swerve. I think for Swerve, he's in a very unique opportunity, a very unique moment here. He is elevated. Don't rush it. Keep it the way it is. And you also have who's behind the mask. That's another thing they have. Which yeah, now that we know it's not story. It's not right. CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> God, that. Can can we just like spend like thirty seconds on that? Yeah, go ahead. How how the rumor mill just started churning and people just worked themselves into all kinds of uh, pretzels, just mind melting themselves trying to get, come up with who who this is, and and then now with him going to Survivor Series, people just got a little worked up. <laughs> well, who who could it be? I mean, is it Adam? Is it Adam yeah. Cole? Is Adam Cole messing with him? <sighs> At this point, I think that's that's where you go, but he's still injured, so I don't know what you do. He's injured for a while, or maybe not. Maybe they're working everybody. I don't know. I I, I really don't know. I'm not wild about that Adam Cole storyline. I like the, the Max was, stuff. Uh, where I, yeah, I like yeah. I like how Max is now being everybody's gunning trying to gun him down, which I'm into this. Yeah. You know, you, you, you have he's numerous people. He's a champion, but everybody's coming at him. And the kind of the story is that he's like falling apart, defending a tag title with no partner and defending his world title every pay-per-view and everything else he's doing in between. I, I like that he's getting worn down. But overall, I, I, I don't, I'm not crazy about the Adam Cole stuff, but that's me. Listen, if you like it, I'm not going to poo-poo on your parade. We've got a few minutes left in the show. When we come back, we're going to talk about some other things. Maybe a little bit on this. Maybe I want to hear from you guys. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. You, did you see what I got, MG? A couple minutes left. Yeah, you Look showed me. It's pretty cool. Isn't this cool? Mm. Life of a yeah. Goth Baby. This is Rebby's Now you got to explain book. who that is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I don't know if anybody, uh, if everybody follows. Like, uh, Rebby Hardy has this great TikTok series about her daughter. Uh, and how, you know, like the day in the life of a gothic baby. It's really cute, really well done, really cute. And she wrote a book and it's adorable. And I got it for my daughter because she loves that series. And it's really, really awesome. Look, you even got mad in there. Very cool stuff. I wanted to give them a little plug on this because this is, uh, it takes a lot of talent to put together something like this and a lot of work. And I'm glad that, uh, she got it. I got two of them. I don't know why I got two. I think I bought, I bought two. I paid for this. Uh, but very. Uh, I wanted to give him a little shout out for that because it's an adorable, adorable book. And my daughter absolutely loves it. The other thing here, uh, I want to give a plug for all the other shows we're doing. I'll be live with Garrett Gonzalez on Tuesday with We're Live Pal. We're going to be talking about this, obviously. And a lot of the aftermath we're going to talk about because Monday Night Raw, all eyes on Monday Night Raw this week. Is CM Punk going to bring up AEW? Or is he going to do the I'm finally back home promo <laughs> that they all do and they all bend the knee? Is CM Punk going to show up with his bag? Is he going to take the mic sleeve off? What kind of sneakers is he going to be wearing? Is he going to have any cupcake and, and seltzer? <laughs> you know what? If Vince was donuts. still in charge, if Vince was still in charge, he would have been coming out holding a muffin every show. Mm. The Muffin Man, CM Punk. You get a muffin and you get him. He just throws him into the crowd. Fantastic. I, 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 yeah, very interesting stuff. But that's it for this week, guys. We're out of time. We'll be back next week with Wrestling Observer Live. See you all next time.